Assalamu alaikum. How is the holiday? I hope you are making productive use of the time. Now, before we went on our break, we, we started our discussion on ecology, which is a, uh, ecology. And we discussed some factors that affect living organisms. We have the biotic factors and the abiotic factors. Bio, as I told you, means life. So when you say the word bio, it refers to life. Biotic factors are factors that have life, Why abiotic factors are factors that do not have life. So when we say biofuel, we know that we are talking about fuel cutting from life sources. Then we move ahead to discuss the habitat as well as the biomes and so on and so forth. Today we are going to talk about the functioning ecosystem. Functioning ecosystem? Ecosystem as we've defined before is a system of interacting organisms. When living organisms we interrelate with the non-living organisms in their environment, such as rain, temperature, we call it an ecosystem. So ecosystem is a system of interacting organisms where a living organism interacts with its non-living neighbors. So under the functioning ecosystem, we start by discussing some like feeding relationship. We have the food chain. A food chain is a linear representation of feeding relationship between organisms and their environment. So I will give you an example of a basic terrestrial food chain. We have grass. Grass is the basic terrestrial food chain. The grass is eaten by grasshopper. Grasshopper is eating. Grasshopper can be eaten by, let's say, toad, which is further eaten by snake. So we call our grass the producer, as we know. It's the one that utilizes energy from the sun to manufacture its food. We have our primary consumer. We have our primary consumer. We have our secondary consumer. Secondary consumer. And finally, we have the tertiary consumer. This is a food chain, a linear relationship, a linear relationship showing feeding between organisms. The grass is eaten by the grasshopper, grasshopper is eaten by toad, and toad is eaten by snake, which forms a tertiary consumer. Now, this relationship is for terrestrial habitats. So you are going to make one showing me the relationship between aquatic habitat. An example of food chain between aquatic habitat. Food web, on the other hand, is a combination of many food chains. It may be three, four, and so on and so forth. Food chain. We have an example here. This is our producer. The producers, as we know, they are organisms that manufacture their food themselves. Plant, flowers, nuts, and so on and so forth. This same plant is eaten by deer, which is also eaten by the Douglas cray, which is eaten by Eddie Chicap spots, and Pacific tree frog, red breasted nut arch, and pika. Now, the deer is eaten by the mountain lion. This same deer, this same deer is eaten by coyote. Now, if we look at this food web, this is a relationship between many food chains. We can count how many food chains are here by this is one relationship, one to here. This is from the producer to the tertiary consumer. The, but as we can see, there are other branches from here, so we count this as well. This is one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is for one. Then another one. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. And so on and, and so on and so forth. So when you are asked to identify how many food chains are in a food web, you just trace the arrow from the producer to the tertiary consumer. Give you an example here. We have um, grass. Grass eaten by grasshopper. 
the same grass is eaten by goats. The same grass is eaten by grass cutter. Grass cutter eaten by snake. Grass upper eaten by grass upper eaten by toad. And this toad is eaten by snake. The goat is eaten by snake. This is a, an example of terrestrial, a simple terrestrial food web. Because unlike food chain, when food chain represents a linear feeding a relationship between organisms. But if we look at it in real life, grass for instance, let's say the elephant grass for example, it is not only grass upper that is feeding on the elephant grass, there are other organisms that are feeding on the elephant grass and that is why we have the food web. So we have our grass here, which is eaten by grass upper, the grass upper is eaten by goat, which is eaten by snake. The same grass is eaten by goat and then goat and this goat is eaten by snake. So as we have it here, we have our producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer and tertiary consumer. Here we have producer, primary consumer and secondary consumer. The same with the other side. So how many food web do we have here? If we want to count how many food web we have, we only need to trace the arrow. You have one, two, three. Sometimes you may have a branch here. Let's say here you have frog. And then have it here. So do not forget when you are counting, you go this way. One, two, three, four. Making so there are four food chains in this food web. Next we talk about energy transformation in ecosystems. Energy transformation in nature. The energy utilized by all living organisms is gotten from the sun. That is the solar energy. That is the major source of energy for all living organisms in the ecosystem. But not all living organisms are able to take this energy directly from the sun, which is what our food web and food chain shows us. So the grass, the grass produces its food. As we know, the grass is a photosynthetic organism. It is an autotroph, meaning it produces its food by itself. So when the grass, the grass utilizes energy from the sun to produce its food, this energy is transferred to the grass cutter when the grass cutter feeds on the grass. And this same energy is transferred to the snake when the snake feeds on the grass cutter. Now this brings us to the laws of thermodynamics. As we know, there are two laws of thermodynamics. The first law, the first law, the first law of thermodynamics called the law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy says energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but can be transferred from one form to the other. So basically, snake needs energy to move. All life processes it requires energy, movement, reproduction, respiration, but snake cannot get this energy directly from the sun. So it comes to the grass cutter, feeds on the grass cutter, which has already been eating grass. So that is where this energy is transformed from the sun to the grass, to the grass cutter, cutter to the snake. Likewise here we have the, grass, um, the sun from sun to the grass, grass upper, toad, and finally to snake. Let's look at this energy conversion in ecosystem. We have the sun, the sun. Now, energy from the sun is used by the 
banana tree. Banana tree converts solar energy to chemical energy into carbohydrates, as we know, which is a chemical substance. Monkey feeds on the banana from the tree. So monkey feeds from, on the banana from the tree, taking this chemical energy from the tree. Monkey hops around, jumps from one tree to the other, jumping, hopping, playing, and so on and so forth. So the monkey converts the chemical energy to mechanical energy, and which now, then, finally, unfortunately, which is the end process of all living organisms, eventually dies and returns the particles back to the soil, which is also used by living organisms to start another chain. For instance, in some cases, our food chain doesn't start with the producers. Our food chain sometimes starts with decomposers. Because decomposers, when they release some chemicals into the soil, the plants use these chemicals to grow them. So that is the first law of um, conservation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but transform from one form to the other. But our second law, the second law of thermodynamics states that Energy transformation in ecosystem is not 100% efficient. Underline, not 100% efficient. Any energy transformation in ecosystem is not 100% efficient. There is energy loss in form of heat energy. So let's say, for instance, now our banana tree got its energy from the sun. But if banana tree got um, 500 joules of energy from the sun, if this is the when before monkey would have fed on the banana, the plant undergoes transportation. It needs to get, um, take water from the soil to perform its life processes. It does a lot of things, as a result of which it is using energy. So before the energy we get to the monkey, it will have reduced to, let's say, 350 joules. There is energy loss in form of heat. In the process, okay, let's use this. You have grass. Grass got 500 joules of energy from the sun. When the grass is eaten by the grass cutter, it gets just 350 joules because the grass has used some of this energy to undergo some processes like transportation or even reproduction. Grass up on its own, after feeding, it hops around, moves, it transports some nutrients in the body, it respirates, and so on, it respires, and so on and so forth, as a result of which it also loses energy in form of heat. So this energy that gets to the toad is about 200 joules. The same thing happens with the toad, eventually getting to the snake, you get just 50 joules. So those that get the, uh, great, the largest amount of energy are the producers. Because the more this energy is being transformed from one form to the other, there is loss of energy in form of heat energy. And this is what gives rise to what we know as pyramid of energy. Pyramid of energy. So we have our producers here, grass, with 500 joules of energy. Primary consumer, grass upper, with 350 joules. Secondary consumer, toad, with 200 joules. And tertiary consumer, snake, with just 50 joules. This is what is known as pyramid of energy. The more the energy is transformed from one form to the other, the more there is energy loss in the ecosystem. Now, this is um, this is all about the ecosystem. Hope to see you next time when we move on to another topic on relevance of biology to agriculture. Assignment. Number one.
actually since this is not a project so let's make it create all you need to do is use my example to make your own aquatic echo system and number two state the second law of thermodynamic Avoid touching your face, wash your hands, avoid crowded regions, may Allah protect us.